Warning, although this podcast revolves around Disney, Disney movies, and Disney-related themes, we have a tendency to use mature language, which is not suitable for all ages. Discretion is advised. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first Ocho and Ortiz Disney podcast of 2021. After a brief hiatus for the holidays, we are back, and on this episode... We're just going to do a quick episode discussing our memories of our first year doing this podcast. Without further ado, let's get things started. Buddy Josh, how is it going? Dave, what's going on, good sir? Uh, you know, I'm just here. We're recording again. It's been a while. I mean, our last episode re- was released December 13th, but I think we recorded it like middle of November, and it's now January the 3rd, so it's been almost two months. I think it's No, been- the last one we recorded was December 6th. Was it December 6th when we recorded? Yeah, because that's what it shows. At least that's what it shows the last time. If you look at their call log before. Uh, oh, on, on here, Skype? Yeah. Oh, okay. I it'll, didn't, it'll show you that, right? It's I, didn't realize we, I didn't realize we recorded it like that close to release day. Because, I mean, we're recording this one close to release day as well. As I said, it's January 3rd, and this is going to be yeah. released on January 10th. But normally we try to record at least two weeks, if not more, in advance. So yeah, I thought we had recorded that Noel episode back in back in November, but uh, December sixth, the day after my birthday. So, woo! <laughs> Yay! And of course, you birthday. had a birthday in December as well, December eighteenth. But you know, Christmas is over now. New Year's is over. How were your holidays? Uh, I mean, they're holidays. They're whatever. I know you're not. The How bi- was yours? I know you're not the biggest Christmas person. It was weird. Because I work retail, which obviously in retail, Christmas is usually the busiest time of year for us. But because of COVID this year and all of the lockdown restrictions, it was and only being open for like curbside pickup and not having people into the store. It was weird. Like it was still stressful because people couldn't wrap their heads around the fact that we were in a pandemic. So the customers that we did have would still yell at us like they normally would. It just wasn't in store. It would be like through the door and stuff. So it, it, was, it was weird, but overall it was, it was good. It was nice to have a little break from recording, but I'm happy to be back. As I said, this episode we're going to deal with our favorite memories from the past year. I know we started this podcast in April, so it hasn't been a full year, but basically our memories of doing the podcast in 2020. So, I mean, without further ado, I guess we'll just get right into it. But before we do, obviously, Josh, you know what's up. We've got some plugs to get in. All right. So uh, what are we plugging today there, buddy Dave? Obviously, we are going to be plugging our social medias. You can follow us and like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. Follow us on Instagram at Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. Or follow us on Twitter, at Ocho Ortiz Disney. You can also become our Patreon on... uh, You can become our patron on Patreon. patreon Patreon.com slash Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. We are going to, this year, try to do some more bonus content for our Patreon page. But right now, usually the Patreon gives you exclusive early access to episodes a week before they're released to the general public. And you can become our patron for as little as a dollar. Shout out to the executive producer of the show. So far, our only patron, William L. So thank you for your continued support, William L. We appreciate it. And you guys can be like William William L. as well. Again, patreon.com slash Ocho and Ortiz. You can grab some merch if you want to help support the show financially. Go to shop.spreadshirt.com slash Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod or teespring.com slash stores slash Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. And if you use the promo... Oh, somebody's dropping a dish. 
And I don't know what the fuck that was. And if you use the promo code New Year from now until November, or sorry, from now until January the twenty third, I believe. I think it's the twenty third. You can save twenty one percent off all orders from our Teespring shop. So once again, it's teespring.com slash stores slash Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. And of course, you can give us a listen. And if you're listening to the show, please be sure you share it with your friends and subscribe and leave us a comment. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, and our main source of uploading is Podbean, Ocho and Ortiz, Disney Pod. Dot podbean dot com. Like I said, it's the best way you guys can help us for free. Obviously, we're still in the middle of this COVID pandemic. A lot of people are out of work, so I know financial situations are tough. You may not be able to subscribe to our Patreon or pick up merchandise, but if you help support us by subscribing to us on whatever podcast and app you listen to, sharing us, leaving us a comment, that's going to help us grow, and it's going to mean more to us than you guys know. Having said that, Josh, right off the bat, like, what what are your what are some of your favorite memories so far from our first year of doing the doing this Disney podcast? You know, to start off, I I really want to say like the first episode, just kind of coming together and talking about our love for Disney and you know what else what um what brought us here and our earliest memories of Disney, like that was really cool. And you know, having having our friend Bob come on the show a couple of times, that was that's really fun as well because Bob has a. I, I I tend to know a lot about Disney, and Bob tends to know more about Disney, you know. Mm-hmm. So talking talking to Bob is always fun, you know. It's not we've I think we've had him on the uh, the wrestling podcast before as well. So oh, yeah, numerous times. Yeah, so talking to Bob is always fun, and uh, switching it up from wrestling to Disney and talking to Bob about it was it was, it was fantastic. And you know, one of my favorite things that you know I wasn't even a part of, but. But you getting to talk to Timmy Britt and doing our first interview, I thought that was fantastic. Listening to to those stories uh, of him talking about working for Disney and everything, I can't I cannot wait to have him back on the show. And, you know, this time I will actually be able there to be able to participate in that interview and talk shop with him about Disney and everything. I'm really looking forward to that book he's going to be releasing this year, I think. And, uh, yeah, it's supposed to be this year. It's almost done, I think. He he posted yeah. about it on social media the other day. It's almost done. Should be released some point this year. I just don't know exactly when. But hopefully we'll have him back on before the book release, but also during the book release to have him talk about the book. Yeah, I think that that'll be that'll be amazing. But yeah, no talking, uh, listening to those stories that he that he talked about, and you know, interacting with him actually on social media through through uh, Instagram has been really fun as well. No, that I just and you know. We we don't really talk about our downloads as much, but the the fact that we've done like fifteen thousand fifteen hundred. Oh, I, I I talk about them all the time. <laughs> like every okay. show, I I try to plug them in now. <laughs> yeah, well, like like the fifteen hundred to me is just is 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 insane that people want to listen to us. Talk yeah, we're about at Disney. we're at one thousand five hundred and twenty seven as of this recording right now. Yeah, no, but that's just crazy that that people want to hear us talk about Disney and that we we are at that. And you know, our so again, our social media has, has grown much more than I thought it would. You know, because when we started this, it was just because you know we needed something else to do with during this pandemic. Because you know, no one knew how long. Everyone whole. initially thought it was just going to be like a two week thing, and yeah. then two weeks turned into a month, and then a month turned into at least here in Ontario three months before everything started opening back up again. Yeah, and but but now with with this with this podcast, I feel like this is this is something we're gonna be. I'm I we're gonna continue with this moving forward for sure because I I love doing this Disney podcast and you know Disney's one of my favorite things in the world so I'm I'm super happy doing this and yeah. What about you? Yeah, well before I get into mine, I do just want to correct myself on the on the Teespring store. It's actually Teespring dot com slash stores slash ocho dash and dash or tease. So I want to be sure I give you guys the right site. For those of you who do want to support us and and, and who would like to buy some merch, teespring.com slash stores slash Ocho dash and dash or tease. But yeah, part of my favorite memories, I mean, you brought it up, t- uh, interviewing Timmy Britt. I am so thankful that that Catherine, who's helping him with the with the book and helping him with his social media and everything, 
I, I, I'm so glad that Catherine got in contact with us to ask to ask us if we wanted to do that interview. And I'll admit I was a little hesitant at first because, I mean, you and I have been had done the wrestling podcast for five years. Well, 2020 would have been our fifth anniversary for the podcast if every if everything hadn't have turned to shit and closed down and wrestling shut down for a while. And we didn't really do a whole lot of interviews on on the wrestling podcast. I think maybe over the course of five years, we did three or four interviews. And I don't know, like, I'm just always hard on myself anyways. I really enjoyed doing interviews, but I never thought I did a good job as an interviewer. I was always yeah. tough on myself. I always thought it could be better. Like, my personal favorite was our interview w- with Holden Albright. I absolutely love the interview with Mark Wheeler. I just think the setting wasn't right because we recorded it from your work at the time at yeah. McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. the background noise and everything, because I didn't have the audio mixer at the time to cut the background noise out. So because of that, it, specifically because of how bad quality the Mark Wheeler interview was, and that's nothing against Mark, that's completely on us, I'd always been hesitant to approach people to do interviews because I always thought it was going to end up being shit just because of us. <laughs> and yeah. so when when Catherine contacted me to, to, to interview Timmy, I was a li- little hesitant. Because I think she contacted us in initially in June or July, and that was right around the time when everything was starting to open back up again with businesses in Ontario. So I was a little hesitant because I didn't know if I was ready to do an interview yet. Plus, I was going to have to get back into the habit of, of working again. But I did eventually manage to work out an interview with Catherine to get Timmy on the show. And man, what an amazing interview he was. And because of that interview, we've also met other great podcasters over at Dudes Dish Disney. So shout out to Dudes Dish Disney as well. Be sure you're checking out their podcast. They've actually had three interviews now with Timmy. I think it was actually one big interview that they cut down into three parts. Because anyone that's heard our interview with Timmy you'll know that Timmy loves to talk. He was a very, very easy interview. I absolutely loved having him on. You just you just give that guy a platform and he will talk and talk. And he's just, he's so energetic and enthusiastic about what he does and what he has done. But he's also very humble. He He's always sure to, to shout out his team and everything as well. But Man, he he loves absolutely telling stories. And I think our interview with him ended up being around an hour and a half. And I just made that one full episode. And like, I'm not sure because I haven't spoken to the Dudes Dish Disney about their interview with Timmy too, too much. But I think theirs was one full interview as well that they cut down into three parts because they usually try to keep their episodes around 30 to 40 minutes. But yeah, Timmy was a great guy. So that's that's definitely a, a highlight of 2020 for me. And as you said, I'm looking forward to having him back on the show. His book, which we did mention, uh, Extraordinary Everyday Magic, that's actually available uh, for pre-order right now on his website. So you can go to timmybrit.art slash memoirs. Memoirs, however you want to pronounce it, M-E-M-O-I-R-S. Or just go to timmybrit.art and it'll be on the homepage. There will be a link on the homepage that you can go. So definitely go pre-order your copy of Extraordinary Everyday Magic. It, I'm so looking forward to this book. And then as you said, like the 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 downloads, like I'm constantly checking the downloads and it's constantly blowing me away that after what? eight months we're already at f- over 1500 downloads because again going back to the wrestling podcast we've been doing that for for five we've been doing that for five years and we haven't even broken 5,000 downloads on that and we have like 220 some odd episodes for the wrestling podcast some of those are just clips that i've uploaded onto podbean that podbean counts as an episode but yeah, still, the fact that we haven't broken 5,000 downloads over five years, and here we are in our first year of the Disney podcast, we still haven't officially reached our first year. 
and we're already over 1,500, just blows me away. And a lot of that obviously has to do with that first The Sentence episode, which I've said numerous times on this show, I don't know how that took off. That's now almost <laughs> at 600 downloads. It may already be over 600 at, at this point. But when I saw it the other day, it was around like 594 or something for that first episode. And again, I don't know how that took off because that was one of the first episodes we recorded in like April, May. And suddenly in mid-September, like it just skyrocketed. I don't know how people found it. I don't know who found it, but I'm I'm certainly grateful for the people that have listened to it and to the people that have listened to all of our other episodes. Generally, for the last two, two and a half months, our episodes have been averaging about 40 episodes each. So I absolutely love to see that because our our wrestling podcast, we were lucky if we were breaking 20 downloads per episode, not including the live episodes, because obviously the live ones that we did from Greektown, we had more listeners, but the the regular episodes, we were struggling to crack 15, 20. So averaging almost 40 for this one is is amazing. And I'm looking forward to doing bigger and better things. Wait, so that that first descendants is at six hundred? Yeah. That's crazy. I remember when it when it went when it hit like three and you're like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. I don't but, know. So let me let, let me ask you this. What if you if you have checked, what is descendants two at? One sixty ish? Wow. So is that our second most downloaded one? It is. It is. And Interesting. I I think well, our Actually, our our first episode would have been our most downloaded, or second yeah. most downloaded, I should say, because it's no, it's not even close to six hundred. But because, as you said, we weren't planning on making this a long term thing. So when we did that first episode, we put it initially on our wrestling site uh, yes. uh, on the Ocho and Ortiz Podbean, and then once we decided that we were going to do more episodes for this Disney podcast. I re-uploaded the first podcast to the Ocho and Ortiz Disney pod on Podbean. And I think on Podbean, it's at around, uh, on the Ocho and Ortiz Disney Podbean, it's around 30 downloads. But okay. on the, on the, I can't remember the exact number, but I was looking at on Ocho and Ortiz the other day and it's over a hundred on that one. So you're looking at at least 130 combined downloads for that episode between Ocho and Ortiz Wrestling and Ocho and Ortiz Disney. So that one did really well as well. It just sucks that (laughs) because I initially put it on the wrestling podcast, it took away the downloads for for this one because then we'd probably be over 1,600 for (laughs) for total downloads already. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I uh, like I said, I think the sentence two is at around 160, 170 last time I saw it, which was a couple of days ago. The the National Treasure Review has done really, really well for us. That was at around 64, 65. Santa Claus 2 review was at 67 when I last checked. Cool Runnings was doing really, really well for us. So more and more people are starting to listen to the episodes and we're we're growing more each time out and that's what I like to see. I want to see that growth. On the flip side of that, what are some of the downsides, if any, that you have from our first year? What do you think that maybe we could improve upon or what would you like to see more of us do in the future as we head into 2021? I'm I'm hoping to do more interviews, right? Bring Timmy back on uh yeah. I don't know exactly who else we could get. Well, I, I still you know would I mean? like to. I would like to do a joint podcast with the Dudes Dish Disney. So hopefully, yeah. hopefully we can get that one going sometime in 2021. Yeah, I, I would love to do that. You know, I, I, as much as you don't like them, Dave, I would. I would. I still want to do some more decoms as well, right? I, I do think we need to go to the to Descendants three. I think we need to finish that trifecta there. I, I'm going to promise you, Dave, that we will not do High School Musical because I know how much you despise that thing. But uh, I do think we should do some more decoms as well. But interviews is definitely one Nam thing. Nam flashbacks. Know. I have Vietnam flashbacks with High School Musical. The amount of times <laughs> I had to deal with that shit while I was working at HMV back in the day when that, when that thing first came out. And I was at HMV throughout the duration of all three of those movies' releases. 
Plus, there was like the live DVD thing that they did. Oh my Sorry, god! I think I have that live DVD somewhere. I, I'm not surprised, and I hate you for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, before Disney Plus came out. I had all those fucking DVDs, and I remember so- showing my friend before when when Disney Plus before Disney Plus came out. I told him like I am Disney Plus, and I sent her a picture of all the movies and <laughs> and stuff that I had, right? Because I have everything, everything before Disney Plus came out. I have all those fucking DComs on 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 DVD, all the High School Musicals, the the Camp Rocks, you know. I have all those oh, things. God. For God's sakes. <laughs> like, I, I have absolutely anything and everything that's Disney. So, you know? so more DCOMs in the future of 2021, interviews. Anything else that you would like to see us do more of in 2021? Or is there anything that you were disappointed with in 2020 that you would like to improve upon going into 2021? The only thing I'm disappointed is that we never got that Halloween Town episode out. <laughs> <laughs> But more things that I'd like to do is, you know, d- depending on how this pandemic goes, I, w- I would like to do some more like videos that I can hopefully post up. If not just me, us at Disney World itself, maybe some more like on on location episodes if we get to go to Disney or um, talking about the parks a little bit more, I think. So maybe bringing Bob on a couple more times, right? Not just reviewing movies, but talking about the different things that are happening in, in the world of Disney as well. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that I think that would be fun as well. That's fair. I I I would enjoy that. Hopefully this hopefully with the vaccines coming out soon, hopefully this pandemic will start to fade away in 2021 and life can start to get back to some sort of resemblance of normalcy and we can start to travel again cuz yeah, I I would absolutely love to do that too. But as you said, I I would definitely love to do more interviews in 2021, more collaborations with other Disney podcasters. I know I mentioned Dudes Dish Disney there's also a couple of other Disney podcasts that we follow on Twitter, and unfortunately, I'm blanking on the names right now, and I'm so, so sorry about that, but I would love to do some collaborations with other Disney podcasts, obviously have Timmy back, hopefully interview some other people from in, in the world of Disney. I would like to do more exclusive content for Patreon to, to make it more enticing for people that want to become our patrons. I mean, obviously, you know getting a week's early access is a good perk. And I mean, I've been trying to do stuff throughout 2020 with giveaways and stuff, but obviously we only have one patron. So it's hard to do giveaways when you only have one patron. So I'd like to (laughs) do like more exclusive patron Patreon content as well, but also try to on a personal level, try to figure out the issues with my, with my computer and the, the video portion because I really would like to get back into the video podcasts. It's been since September since we've had a proper video podcast put up on our YouTube channel. So I would, I if I if I end up being put on a leave of absence from work again during the second wave of COVID on in Ontario, and it looks like it's likely to happen within the next week or so, mm. it it will at least give me the time to figure out what's going on with my computer see if I actually need to buy a new computer because this one's like four years old so it just might not be compatible with the programs anymore might might just need a new battery because I know the battery is shit on this computer too but I do want to get more into 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 video podcasts again and promotion I'm I mean this is something that I've always had issues with going back to the wrestling days too is promoting the show more I would like to get more promotion out of both of us for for the show, but I mean, obviously myself as well, because I am the one handling the, the social medias. I need to be more active on there. I think I've done a better job of that in the tail end of 2020, especially on Twitter. I've been following more, not just Disney podcasts, but just other podcasters on our Twitter and retweeting them in the hopes that they'll do the favor of retweeting us to get our podcasts out to their audiences. And that seems to have helped a little in the increase in in downloads for us. So I absolutely want to do more promotional stuff in in 2021 to promote the podcast. I'm going to try to be more active on our TikTok, just not necessarily making like trendy videos, but at least making videos that help to promote us. Because again, TikTok is another platform to get your message out there for whatever it is that you want to promote, right? So promotion is a key issue for me going forward. I definitely want better promotion out of both of us. But 
I'm going to be especially hard on myself, as I said, because I do control all of the social medias. So that's the bulk of the work is going to be on me. Yeah, other, other than that, there's not really anything that I can think of right now that I want to improve upon in, in 2021. We already discussed our favorite parts of 2020, and that sort of tied in with what we would like to do more of in 2021. Having and, s- and anything you were um, disappointed with for, or for 2020? That we did. Like I said, like just just the promotion. I think I, I think I could have been more proactive, especially on social media, promoting everything. I could have been more active, and I, I think that really just fell down to you know we were just starting to take off off with this podcast, and then we returned to work in Ontario, and it was just sort of getting accustomed to like the COVID procedures and everything, and like just getting accustomed to a new way of work life and and mm. a new way of life in general during this pandemic. So I wasn't as proactive in, in promoting as I would have liked to have been. And I think that was my biggest disappointment for, for 2021. Okay. Okay. In terms of episodes, do you have any favorite episodes that we did? Obviously I think descent stands out for you, <laughs> but yeah. What, what are some of your favorite episodes that we did in, in, in 2021 or sorry, in 2020? And what are some, obviously you already mentioned Descents 3, but what are some other other episodes that you would like to see us do in, in 2021? Whether it be reviews of something or whether it be just discussing Disney-related topics. With favorite episodes, obviously Descendants is, is high up there for me because you know, I, I love that fucking franchise. I know how much you dislike it, Dave, but it's it's one of my favorite franchises that's out there. Other than that, when anytime we got to we talk in theme parks, so, which I was episode five was really fun because we got to bring on Bob again for that one. Yeah, I would like to have him back on for for something yes. like that because I'll admit I was tuned out most of that episode because again <laughs> that was sort of when I started having issues with the video recording, and most of that episode I was focused on trying to get the video working, and yeah. I was so tuned, and you could. You, I, I think when you play it back, you can hear it. When Bob starts asking me questions, I sort of half-heartedly answer, not really hearing the full questions. Because so he was asking me, like, he, he asked us something like, how many parks does Disney World have? And, like, I was just sort of half-tuned out, and I didn't know what... I, I misunderstood the question, but yeah. So I definitely want to have Bob back on to do theme parks again, because... I would say that that was my least favorite episode personally, just because I was so tuned out trying to fix the mm. audio and visual problems that were going on for that episode. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Muppets Christmas as my least favorite episode. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you saw that one coming. Yep. <laughs> yep. Cause uh, yeah, fuck Christmas, fuck the Muppets. But like, uh, I, I mean like we did the Santa Claus and Noel and like the thing with Santa Claus is that's a classic to me. I've watched, I grew up watching that. Noel was fun. I really do like Anna Kendrick, but I just, uh, that fucking Christmas in July bullshit that you fucking pulled. Well, and like, <sighs> like I said on the episode, that was really... Or May. Christmas in May. Yeah, and, and like I said on the episode, that was because that episode was specifically releasing on the 30th anniversary of Jim Henson's death. So that's yeah. what, and, and Muppet's Christmas Carol was the first Muppet movie made under the Disney, uh, for Disney. So that's why that was done in May. Normally, I would have held off until Christmas to have done it, but I I grew up a big Jim Henson fan. I watched so much Jim Henson shit from the Muppets to the Muppet Babies to Fraggle Rock to Dinosaurs, obviously Sesame Street. So I've always had a lifelong love for Jim Henson and his creations. So I wanted to do an episode that honored him. And because he didn't, he didn't really do most of his work with Disney. I want to focus on something that he did that was done with Disney. And like I said, Muppets Christmas Carol just happened to be the first Muppet movie that was made with Disney. So that's why we ended up doing that one in May. Yeah, no, still least favorite episode for sure. And Descendants is one of my favorites. Again, the one talking with Bob and Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus was another favorite of mine. Anytime I really like doing episodes where you and I have different opinions on on movies, I think that's I think it's really fun, and it's I think it's uh, a funny conversation that you and I have. And I think 
Personally, I think the audience might like that because, you know, you have one opinion. I have a completely different opinion. We're always not agreeing. And I think those are those make the most fun episodes. Yeah. And along those lines, and I mean, I'm going to add to my least favorite episodes as well. And (laughs) I'm so sorry to do this, but both my least favorite episodes were ones that we did with Bob because we've actually had Bob on twice. Yeah. Because we actually had Bob on for our second episode, which was actually our first review episode where we did our review of Brave. And you and I aren't really used to reviewing movies and stuff. So Mm -hmm. I don't think that episode was as good as it could have been. And again, neither of these (laughs) episodes, both of these episodes happen to have Bob on them. But neither of them are my least favorite because of Bob. I absolutely love Bob, and I want him want him on the show again in the in the future. Just again with the Disney episode or with the Disney theme park episode, I was so busy trying to fix audio and visual issues that were going on with that episode. I was so tuned out. And then the Brave episode, again, it was our first time doing a movie review, and we didn't really. I don't think either you or I really knew how we wanted to structure movie or TV reviews. I I mean, I think we've definitely gotten better and we've we found our rhythm since then. But yeah, I, I, I would rank those two episodes as my least favorite. And I definitely want to at some point re-review Brave and do it justice because I don't think we did it justice with with that first episode just because, as I've said, we had no idea what the fuck we were doing when it comes to reviews. In terms of my favorite, by by far, far and away, Timmy Britt. That was just, that ended up being just such a fun episode. Again... Timmy Britt loves to tell stories. It, he made it so easy for me as an interviewer. Basically, all I had to do was press record and try and try to get over in edgewise every once in a while. But t- Timmy was fantastic. I absolutely love him. Again, go to, to timmybritt.art. Pre-order his, his, his book, which is going to be coming out later this year. So that's by far and away my favorite episode. And then pretty much anything that we've done post Halloween, because I know the Halloween Town episode never did come out, or we never actually did end up recording it. But in every episode since then, we have made some sort of comments regarding that episode that we never recorded and how much I hate it. So every episode that we've done since Halloween has basically had me going off on Halloween Town, <laughs> which, again, is such a fucking horrible movie. Jesus fucking Christ. I don't understand how so many people love that piece of shit movie. It is so bad, Josh. It is so bad. I don't understand. For a movie made in 1998 for the special effects and the makeup and everything else to be as bad as it was, I just don't get it. And it annoys me so much. But <laughs> every episode that we have done since since how since that failed Halloween Town episode, we have included <laughs> me and you going back and forth in some form or another about that episode that was never recorded. And I, I've just had such a blast doing that. So pretty much any episode since since Halloween is also a personal favorite, but that that Timmy Britt one definitely stands out as my favorite, my number one favorite episode of of 2020. Yeah, because we're about to do it again. Where I say it's a fucking classic, Dave. It's a fucking classic. How can you not like Halloween Town? It's because one of the it best was garbage. It was so it's awful. Not garbage. It is garbage. <sighs> Dave, you're again. You're talking I feel about, like um, I feel like you're the dog in the meme surrounded by fire with a cup of coffee that says this is fine while you're watching Halloween Town. It's not fine. It's a burning piece of shit going on around you. No, Dave, it's a fantastic <laughs> fucking movie. It's no, a great it's movie. it's not. It's terrible. It is. No. It is the, terrible. Yeah, you, you go. You go again. I think I would this, rather watch. I would. Time. I would rather watch Descendants three than Halloween Town. But we say this every single time, where 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 you because you go off about the the special effects because it's the 1998, and then you don't go off give about me the how, budget excuse. That's no excuse. That's, that's no excuse for how excuse. poor that how poorly done that movie was. That is exactly an no, excuse. That was no, 1998. no. I am not accepting that as an excuse. 
that that's a great excuse no, because it's no it is not it is it, 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 it is a cop out it's, it's, i will it's, not take it's, that it's, no it was a, it was no i am overriding you i am not taking that as an excuse <laughs> And see, this is what I like to talk about. We are going to do Halloween Town, Dave. It'll happen one day. Oh, my God. It's, 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 it's like you going on about how you don't think Chilling Like a Villain is the greatest. I fucking hate that franchise. song. I was so happy I didn't have to hear it at work during Christmas. And then one fucking day it got mixed in with the with the Christmas fucking rotation. And I was so angry. And I was throwing boxes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fantastic song. I hate it. Um, Chilling Like a Villain is a, is, is a fantastic song. Greatest song of the De- Descendants franchise. And, you know, Descendants is one of the best franchises of a decom. Uh, no, no. The only acceptable answer for for the best song of that franchise is Evil Like Me. That's the only song that's tolerable. But speaking of Descendants and Descendants 3... Other than Descends Three, did you did you say what else you want to review for twenty twenty one? You know what I'm I'm looking forward to. I'm hoping that we can branch off into some uh, some some TV shows. Yes, or, yeah, or definitely. Some, show, some shows that they've that they've released on Disney Plus exclusively, like maybe Mandalorian, or quite possibly uh, what's that one that we loved so much at the beginning. Actually, um, that the Mandalorian that goes back to what I said earlier earlier about doing more about more Patreon exclusive content. As I've actually been thinking this over the last couple of weeks, I would love to have like a Patreon exclusive show where we just sort of go back and review the first two two seasons of of Mandalorian. Maybe maybe make it like a once or twice a month type thing where we do one one or two episodes. But yeah, I would I would love to review Mandalorian, but do it as like a Patreon exclusive, just so we can try to get more exclusive content on there for people okay. that want to become our patrons, but don't see the value in it. Okay, yeah, no, I'm 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 100 for that, and also the Imagineering story is something that I would really like to go through and talk about as well. That Those would be a great tie-in like with. That. that would be a great tie-in to get Timmy Britt back on too. Yes, yes, I would. Oh, that would be that would be fantastic. Yeah. Any anything like those documentaries where they talk about they talk about the old stuff with with Walt or or building the theme parks, like it's just to me it's some of that stuff is just it's very fascinating and I think that would be really fun to talk about. Yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, again, for me, I would like to re redo Brave at some time at some point and and give that a better review than what we we gave it the first time around. I would absolutely love to get into into more TV shows and stuff as well. And like I've been saying since we started this this podcast, I want to get into like some Disney conspiracy shit. Yes. Uh, and if I do end up go- going on leave of absence again from work due to COVID, hopefully that'll give me some time to actually properly research that because that's definitely a, a topic that, that I would like to get into. We've been talking for almost 40 minutes now, so we're, we're going to start to wrap it up. But one, one, one of the few things left that I want to ask you is what sort of surprised you from, from the first year of doing this podcast? Well, I think I've already said it is the, the amount of downloads that we've, that we've actually hit compared to what we did with the wrestling podcast and the fact that, that people want to listen to us talk about Disney. I, think, I thought the, not many people were going to want to. And I mean, I mean, you you were definitely the one that runs the accounts, but I seem to see a much more more people interacting with us on 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 the social media there, and I I love that, and I it was surprised when we actually started getting like you know suggestions of what people would like us to review, and again, yeah, the, and for the, anybody the listening, and, and, and for anybody listening to this, if you guys do have suggestions on what you want to hear us review please feel free to get in touch with us on any of our social medias on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. I gave them at the beginning of the show. I'll give them again at the end of the show, but we would absolutely love to hear your feedback and, and and hear what you guys want us to talk about. Yeah, I think that would be, that'd be great. And I mean, yeah, I'm going to try and do some more engagement in the social medias as well. The, the, uh, what, what did you say? Promoting it. And, and one thing that I, that I personally would like to try to do, I want to start putting out, what we're going to record next, yeah, I want to kind of put that out and then get if it's a movie if we're doing a movie review, which we most likely will be, 
kind of put it out maybe a week before and just kind of get some feedback on what the fans in the audience have, have if they've watched it what they thought of it and you know we'll we'll read it out on the show yeah and i mean that's something that we've been talking about for a while now and i recently did that on tiktok for noel and again shout out to to denver juggler on tiktok for actually giving us his thoughts on the movie noel which we did end up reading on the on the podcast so yeah, I would definitely like to do that as well. But in, for me, in terms of surprises, definitely the downloads is a big one. And then just coming across like some of these hidden gems on, on Disney+. Plus. You brought up Imagineers, but even like just other documentaries like Wake and Sleep and Beauty. Like neither yes. one of us had any idea what that was going to be like. I was just looking for something on Disney Plus to review because it was my pick that week. And I came across Wake and Sleep and Beauty. And I was going to buy, I, I, I actually did scroll by it at first. And then I went back. I'm like, let me read what this is about. So I read what it was about. I'm like, okay, it's, it's about the, it's, it's about the Disney Renaissance period. Could be interesting. So I suggested it to you. We ended up watching it and reviewing it. And it was so fantastically done. And then again with, with Howard. And both of those movies were produced and directed by by the same person. So yeah, just the the pleasant surprise of finding hidden gems on Disney Plus, things that I wouldn't expect that I would have picked to review that we ended up reviewing and ended up just being tremendous, tremendous documentaries and and movies. Yeah, no, the the Waking Sleeping Beauty is a great example because I had no idea what that was, and I've watched that thing like three or four times. I fucking loved it, and uh, oh yeah, yeah. I've, it, I've it, watched it, it multiple me, times. It gave me a since. bigger uh, respect and knowledge of Howard Ashman and Alan Menken, so I, yep. I, I love that. Yep. So before I plug the the socials again and wrap things up, is there anything else that you want to say in terms of the Ocho and Ortiz Disney podcast? in terms of memories from 2020 or things that you're looking forward to for 2021? No, I honestly just thank you everybody for listening and for who has listened and, you know, for all the downloads and for, for listening to the, to the descendants one, because again, that's one of my favorite episodes. The fact that you guys have made that, uh, that our most downloaded episode ever at 600 episodes. I don't know where the fuck that, or 600 downloads. I don't know where the fuck that came from, but I love it. <laughs> and thank you guys, because just because of that, I know for a fact we will definitely be doing Descendants 3 soon. <laughs> I mean, come on. You were going to make me watch Descendants 3 at some point. Anyway. I, I was going to, but like, just the fact of how much that is and the fact that like Descendants 2 is the second highest downloaded one at, at like, you know, 160. Like, I, we got we to gotta do 3. We got to hit that trifecta. And uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited. Okay, and yeah, I think, I think I've said that all everything that I've wanted to, to get in as Josh said, thank you, everybody that, that's tuned in and, and listened to us. And we actually have a new notification on Podbean. We got a new follower 22 days ago, which I did not see. <laughs> so Mead Musin, thank you for, for following us on, on Podbean. Definitely appreciate that. I'm going to follow you back right now. Sorry, it's been a while, obviously, because we've been off for so long. It's been a while since I've actually logged into the Podbean account to read the notifications. So thank you, Mead Musin, and thank you to everybody else that follows us. If you're not already following us, please do so. We are available on most major podcasts and platforms, like I said before. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn. Our main source of uploading is Podbean. Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod dot Podbean dot com. Please be sure you're giving us a follow on whatever podcast and platform you're listening to and leave us a comment or give the episode a like. That helps us out a lot more than you guys realize. Those interactions help us help us reach more people. So please, please, please be sure to give us a follow and a like and a comment if you are able to do so. Follow us on social media. Facebook.com slash Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. Instagram at Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. TikTok at Ocho Ortiz Disney. And, or sorry, TikTok at Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. Sorry. And Twitter at Ocho Ortiz Disney. And of course, if you want to buy some merch, you can go to shop.spreadshirt.com slash Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. 
And you can also go to Teespring, teespring.com slash stores slash Ocho dash and dash Ortiz. Use promo code New Year, all one word, from now until January the 23rd and save 21% off of your purchase, 21% for 2021. And if you want to become our patron on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. And I've already mentioned it numerous times, but you can also help out our buddy Timmy Britt by going to timmybritt.art and pre-ordering his book, Extraordinary Everyday Magic. We look forward to reading it. We look forward to having him back on. I can't thank you guys enough. Like, we have 10 out of 21 episodes that are over 40 downloads. So we, we, we greatly appreciate you guys listening. But again, please be sure you're leaving a like and a comment because that's going to help us out a lot more as well. Especially if you guys can't help us out financially given the current situation with, with the pandemic. And if you can't become our patron, patron, can't buy merch, the best way you can help us out, leave a comment, leave a like, share our episodes. And having said that, guys, as always, whether you're listening to this in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening, whatever time of day it is, where you are, when you're listening, we thank you for listening, we appreciate you listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Adios. Adios.